Hello everyone and welcome to this Microsoft Fabric video tutorial. Now, just like many of you know, the Microsoft Fabric is perhaps the biggest deal in the Microsoft technologies because it's a very powerful end-to-end -end analytic solution with full-scale capability, including data movement, data lakes, data engineering, data integration, data science such as performing of machine learning modeling, and of course, real-time analytics in this video i'm going to show you how to connect the data set in excel transform the data set and load to a data warehouse in the microsoft fabric so without much talking let's get started now the first thing you want to do is to go to app.powerbi.com so you have to sign it into your account and of course you have to choose microsoft fabric so you're going to see this microsoft fabric home so we can see all your data in one location organize collaborate and create and these are the technology you can actually explore within the microsoft fabric such as the power bi data factory synapse data engineering synapse data science synapse data warehouse and synapse real-time analytics so we actually want to focus on the data factory which solves the problem of integration and ETL scenarios with cloud scale data movement and data transformation services. So, of course, I've signed it into my account, and of course, this is my personal tenant. Okay, so I'm just going to click on Data Factory, and of course, so we can see the Data Factory home. So, the first thing I want to do is to create a special um, workspace for the Data Factory. So, I'm going to come to the workspaces, click on that, and then choose New workspace so we're going to see the new workspace in a pane opening to the right of the screen now the only thing we need to do is to give name for the workspace and of course you can give description which is optional you can assign in a domain and of course you can even upload picture for that specific work workspace and of course you can even insert or assign in you know, users and groups but let's just focus on the name so i'm, I'm going to call this one etl and then just go ahead and click on apply so you can see the ETL workspace is now in enabled. Now what we're going to do is in the new button here, just click on that. So we're going to see different you know, options such as data pipeline, you know, data flow, Gen 2, which are all in preview, event stream, experiment, KQL database, and so on and so forth. Now we actually want to focus on data flow Gen 2. So I'm going to click on that, and that's going to open the Power Query in the online version where we can connect to different data sources so we can see just like we have in the power and power bi or excel desktop so we can see the power query now this is that online version the cloud base so i can click on get data or i can even just click on import from excel because the data set is on excel tables okay now when i click on that you can see we have two options so either click on link to file or we can even upload the file itself. Now this is actually also in the preview. So I'm going to choose upload file and then we can browse through the location where the file is stored. Now this file is actually stored in the data factory Excel workbook. So double click on that. Just go ahead and click on um, next. Now you can see we have all the you know, data set. Now they are actually in an Excel table. So this are um, Excel table icon, and for this is you know sheet icon. Now you can just you know click on each of them, and we're going to see the preview of the data set. So we can see this is the transaction data. Now this is going to be our fact table, and of course we have two other tables: the DIM product and the DIM payment tab. Okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click on you know create. Amazing. So we can see the three tables inside the Power Query online. This is cool. The first one we do, having um, extracted the data set from Excel, we want to perform transformation. Now, let me just explain the transformation we want to perform. Now, this is going to be our fact table. Now, in the fact table, we have what's called the foreign keys that connect us to the primary keys in the DIM tables, such as the DIM product and the DIM you know, payment type. Okay, so you can see, um, for instance, the DIM payment type, the primary key that is associated with apple apple pay payment type is one rather so that's the primary key so when we come to the transaction um, data we can see this is the foreign key to connect to apple pay payment type so we want to just use the merge query in the power query online now to do that very simple now 
just come to the home tab now in the home tab we can see the combined group so i'm going to expand this and then i can match queries as new or just match query now let's just go with match query so i'm going to click on that and of course just like we do in the power bi for power query and excel for power query now you can see all the tables in the transaction um, table now i'm going to choose the foreign key of the product and then I'm going to choose the table that is DIM product and then we're going to connect that to the primary key here and that's going to create what's called a snowflake or VLOOKUP in the Power Query Online. You can see the selection matches 99 of 99 rows from the first table. So this is fine. Go ahead and click OK. All right. So we can see the DIM product. Now, all we need to do is to go ahead and click on this upward facing expandable button and then we want to actually use the product name only so i'm going to uncheck the product id we only need the corresponding you know product name for the key so go ahead and click ok All right so we'll be able to return the corresponding product name based on the primary key and the foreign key now let's do the same thing for the dealing payment type again click on combine we want to choose match queries and of course, I want to choose the payment type and I want to choose the DIM payment type from the dimension table and connect to the primary key in there. And then we're going to see the selection matches 99 of 99 rows from the first table. Click OK. And again, so we want to click on this expandable button and then uncheck payment type tool. So we need the actual payment type names. Click OK amazing so we can see that we have the names of the product and the payment type so what we need to do is to go ahead and get rid of this payment product and payment type now i'm just going to click on this you know button to maximize the data preview and then i can grab the two um columns hold down the shift key you can right click and choose remove columns and of course we need to tidy up this product dot one and payment type dot one so make it meaningful so we're going to get rid of the dot one so delete that and then let's do the same thing for the payment type double click on the name and get rid of the extraneous values now let's go ahead and um, reorder these two columns i'm going to grab the two let's place them after the date column and this is looking nice now the amazing part is that we can see the view now let me just you know collapse this now this is all that we have done, the transformation. Now, let's just, you know, have some little, you know, knowledge of this aspect. Now, we can see we have the two DIM tables, the DIM payment type and DIM product. So, the first thing is we actually connect from Excel, which is the source, and we connect it to the table. And, of course, we can see the data types, which are automatically changed in the applied step here, okay? And, of course, we can see that we perform a margin based on, on each of the DIM table and the fact table. And after we perform the margin, uh, we rename the columns and then we reorder the columns and then we have the last step, okay? So I'm just gonna put it back in data preview and this is nice. So we're done with transformation. Now the next thing is to go ahead and load to the destination. Now, when you look at this, you know, bottom here, you can see we have an option to choose the data destination. Now you can just click on this plus sign or in the home tab of the Power Query Online, you're going to see the add data destination. Now I'm going to expand that. Now we have four options, either to load them to Azure SQL database, Lake House, Azure Data Explorer, and Data Wells. Now I want to focus on loading the data set into the data wells. So I'm going to choose data wells. Now I do not have any data wells you know, created. Now that's pretty fine. So we can see the connection credentials. Now I'm going to connect to the data wells. Now I can click on this edit connection. And of course, you can specify other parameters such as the organization account. And of course, you need to sign in, but I've actually signed. So I do not need to sign in again. I'm going to click on next. Okay, so you can actually see that I'm signed in. Okay, so we can see we have the data wells um, folder. Now, the name of our workspace we created is the ETL. Now, you don't 
this is what we created initially and i'm going to click on this expand button and then i can access the data flow staging well so click on this and then we're going to see a new table will be created in the data flows staging warehouse now that's fine i can actually rename the name of the table if i want but that's fine so go ahead and click on next in the intermediate choose destination settings now you probably do not want to touch anything here, but just to look around we have the color mapping the name of the columns we can see the source data types we can see the destination and the destination type just go ahead and click on save settings amazing so we've been able to choose the destination which is warehouse and we need to just go ahead and uh, publish now you have two options you can publish right now or publish later now let's go ahead and publish right now so in the data factory etl workspace we created we can see things as the name of the data flow now when you check the corresponding types you can see this is data flows gen 2 now for the data flow staging lake house we have two types the data set itself the default and the sql endpoints and of course we have the data flows staging warehouse so we can see the default data set and the warehouse itself now we can see the name of the owner it's actually a personal in tenants and of course we can see the time it was last refresh the date and time okay now let's go ahead and want to actually access the data warehouse so i'm just going to click on this data flows staging warehouse with the corresponding warehouse type so just click on this amazing so we are right now in the microsoft fabric warehouse this is amazing this is cool now we can see the data flow staging warehouse so we can see the schema the database owner and of course under the tables we have the table now just like you know in you know sql we have not only tables as objects or schemas we have the views functions stored procedure and so on and so forth now this is the data set now you can even expand on this and see the columns in the transaction in the table that's quite amazing now let's just play around and write in a simple you know sql query right in microsoft fabric way out so i'm just going to click on this new sql query and of course i can just like we do in my SQL, SQL Server, Oracle SQL, IBM DB2, and other relational database management systems, we can write the SQL code or query inside the Microsoft Fabric. So let's go ahead, let's access all the columns in this transaction in a table. So I'm gonna say select star from there. I can even grab the transaction in a table, just grab and drop here. So we can see data flow staging warehouse, the schema, and of course the database owner, DBO, and of course the name of the table. Now go ahead and click on run, and then we should see the entire data set return. Now you can even use, like we do, the where clause. So let's see where you know, sales column is greater than or equal to, um, let's do 15,500. Then we can go ahead and run the code. And of course, you can see there are three records that satisfied the criteria. And of course, you can even play around. You can save as table. You can save this query as a table. You can download in Excel file. You can even visualize the results. So in the subsequent videos, I'm going to show you some other things you can do with the microsoft fabric i hope you enjoyed this video if you do please like share comment and subscribe to the channel thank you and bye for now cheers